Well, let me just state the obvious to some people that probably really know what's going on. You know, they've been talking now that the polls, how could the polls and all the media pundits and the political analysts been so wrong about Trump? Um, well, let me put it to this way. People have saw through all the corruption. They're figuring, you know, he's the only guy that we know that is actually talking where America first. Uh, we're not going to be melded into a new world order. <laughs> he's against, like, Trans-Pacific Partnership. He's for... And, you know, it's uh, going right back to the American Revolution, more or less. Uh, and, you know, I really have to really read this line again here on the bottom, if that's showing up, hopefully. These are times that try my men's souls. Thomas Paine. I think what we're coming up into is going to be something, actually, that's not going to be too easy. Um, you know, during the time when Andrew Jackson was going against Nicholas Biddle with the Central Bank of the USA, uh, you know what happened? They really created a panic. They created a freaking economic depression. Uh, and that was to try to people to force people onto the central bank of the USA. But people were wise enough to know what's going on. Now, if you look at what's been going on over the last several years, we do know the markets, the general equities have been pumped up by Federal Reserve policy. I talked about this before. And it's not just, you know, because I really don't pay attention too much to the conspiracy channels out there. I know they're basically right. But there's all kinds of information coming out from, um, you know, major fund, a major head fund managers like Grantham Management and things like that. And there's a lot of them that are talking about an economic implosion due to debt. Uh, Warren Buffett's even talking about. It. There's a lot of bad signs out there. So I think before even if Len, uh, Ronald, uh, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> yeah, Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump, before um, Donald Ronald, right? Uh, before Donald gets in office, they're probably, they might even implode the economy or make it um, semi-imploded and do the rest as soon as he gets elected. And blame it on blame it on him. They'll try to do that. So, um, anyway, I think a lot of people see the stark reality of the situation. You know, we cannot just have a great America without industry and making things. I mean, sure, it could be not just industry and manufacturing, but it has to be true production of goods and services uh, such as, you know, agriculture would be a freaking good one. I know that's going to be very, very uh, lucrative in the future. There's so many, there's, few, there's so few farmers out there. God, and you know, when I was talking about, I, I know this global warming stuff is a lot of sm smoke of everybody's well, yeah, wazoos, you know. They're talking about the global warming. Wait till next winter and the winter after. God, it's going to get ridiculously cold. Um, and it's affect our crop production, so that's going to also affect our economy. Uh, you know, the one way they're really going to cancel out all this global debt is through depression and major wars. I hate to say this, but, you know, that's really what they do. How the hell else do you think they freaking cancel out all the debt? They destroy everything, damn it, for crying out loud. So, you know, it might be back, you know, instead of the millennial generation now, they're so busy looking at, you know, their freaking iPads and crap like that and their iPhones. Uh, you know, it's going to probably go back to working in the factory, damn it, to make some stuff, even if it's using some old technology because the only way we get rich is to actually create things and I know it's creating with YouTube videos but just limit to how much you could do with that I like putting these out here more for psychological purposes because I don't like I do not ignore the problems but then I don't like making people feel like oh my god oh, it's so bad oh, what are we gonna do? And, you know like putting people on edge at freaking every two seconds I don't like that either but uh, you know, the major media and the pundits, they weren't wrong. They were lying to us. They were like playing a media advertising campaign to f sway our opinions and get us away from Trump. It, it was almost like rah, rah, rah for the team. And that's what they were doing, rah, rah, rah for the globalist team. Any politician, which was all the rest of them, except for maybe Bernie Sanders. I don't think he's so much of a globalist. I mean, I don't really, I'm not too keen on him because he's too socialistic, but he's definitely not a globalist like the rest of them. So they were creating their, you know, the major media wasn't wrong about the polls. The polls weren't wrong. The polls were skewed to make people want to go with the majority, you know. It's like you start something, people follow, you know. As soon as somebody does something, somebody follows. Start a trend, you know, it, it works like that with media, it works like that with marketing it works like that with products you know it's almost like the same damn thing with hula hoops so in the 50s was a classic trend and there's a lot of stupid trends they got today too but 
<laughs> you know, I could see right now how the major media and all the political pundits that are working for the, the globalists and sucking up to whoever the powers are. They're the ones right now, they're like, you know, just like old girl like is saying, you know, I'm promise me one thing, uh, don't take me home until I'm drunk. Because they're basically, they, they're realizing people see the reality through the smoke screens that they're presenting with these polls and these freaking articles. You know how many articles I've seen in the major media slamming the hell out of Trump? I mean, they, now they got one out there, I forgot what the hell is in the major media about, you know, the Republican Party is now officially dead and they showed a, the elephant with the red, white, and blue, you know, on its side or something. No, actually, and you know, I look at it with Trump. I mean, it, actually, the best thing that Trump can do is not do too much. Just like get rid of some dumb laws and stuff like that. Not even work that hard. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the evil bastards got to work hard to freaking fool us. The government that governs best is the government that governs least. The major problem that Trump's going to have is all the freaking dirt that's going to be thrown on him in the future. But I guess the people freaking figured it out already, you know, exactly what's going on. You know, everybody in the, uh, you know, the clown act on the top where the freaking major media is, they're, they're, they're looking at the image they want to see. Um, they're trying to freaking sway us. Uh, like old guy is over here doing with the girl, you know, and, and change their mind, you know, change the people's mind through just blatant freaking, I know they're hit pieces, but basically what the hit pieces are against Trump, like in their articles that they're constantly putting out, they'll put like the worst picture of the guy, and I can name all these journalist names, because I read all the major media, and I was like, holy shit, these guys are freaking, that's all they do, man, that's all they were doing, now that he's pre the presumptive candidate, to try and other angles on stuff. But watch what happens, I think, when the freaking economy implodes. It's already imploded. It's just that we're not seeing it in the numbers, especially on a stock market. But who the hell invests in the stock market? But then again, if the stock market crashes, you know what's going to happen there. Hey, no capital freaking for reinvestment in this country. Mm. So how the hell are you going to make America great? See, that's what I think they're going to be doing. Um, the big bad guys now, because... You know, he's in there with a political promise, make America great again. And we're probably going to have the greatest freaking depression coming up, period. Not due to Donald Trump, but they're going to allow everything just to freaking go under. Because it's already under. It's just that they're painting over everything in a rosy picture. Like old girl here with the selfie in the big pink hat. You know? And the reality of the situation is, you know, the economy, they're presenting the economy like it's fantastic. You know, all the indust industry, industrial base is leaving the country, right? You know, when we have an economy that's booming or something, say economy like in New Jersey, for instance, the economy in New Jersey is like family counseling, um, you know, psychiatric, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, for, for I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, d dads or something like that, to having problems with, you know, single dads or single moms or whatever the hell it is. That's all part of the freaking GDP, which actually doesn't do nothing. I mean, you know, a lot of people didn't have time to get go to somebody getting $300 an hour to tell them their problems, right? That's all part of the GDP, funded by the state, mostly. And they're telling you that's all good. That makes the economy look good. Oh, yeah. But, you know, reality is we need stuff to survive. You know, if you don't have the stuff, and when you have the stuff to survive, you know, you got ups and downs and everything's fine, you know. But the, the thing is you need to actually produce to keep going. And what's really showing that the American economy is horrible is that goods, real raw goods, production of raw goods and production of manufactured goods is greatly been diminished over the last years. That's stuff that people need to really survive, not cute words from so $300 an hour drug dealers that call them some psychi psychiatrist, whatever the hell it is. But that's another racket out there that's part of the GDP. But, you know, people are, like, freaking seeing behind the scenes what the economy is. And, and you know, they showed the one thing, the economy, me is the girl with the pink hat, but here's the economy. It's a zombie. Ugh! You know, there's nothing underneath the skin. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, so they're probably going to let the reality come out when Trump gets in office. That's what I'm thinking. That's the next game these jerks are going to play. But they have been so freaking wrong. And you know what? They weren't wrong. You know what it was? They were trying to market like, in other words, this poster in the background, you see the UFO in the background on the wall. This is like the planning room of the people that were trying to stop Trump, both on 
the Republican side, the Democratic side, but not just the political side, but all the owned media side. All the owned media, which is owned by the globalists, people are selling the America's interest down the, the, the freaking river to the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, NAFTA, the UN, the United Nations, whatever the hell else they're doing. You know, it's like they want to believe <laughs> that Trump is not going to make it. It's like they want to believe in UFOs, they want to believe in flying saucers, whatever, fine. That was their whole campaign, and they're putting out so many hit pieces. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to believe that this and all this. Yeah, Trump is an alien from freaking Mars. He's trying to take over the world, and yeah, you know, whatever they try to say about him, people just weren't buying it anymore, and they voted for him. They said, the hell with it. Because the more they freaking put out against this guy, the more people were actually <laughs> going for him. Because they wonder, what's the deal with this guy? Why is he, why is everybody freaking so much against him? What did he do? What did he do? I want to find out. And then they're finding out, he, he didn't do shit wrong. He mean, crying out loud. I mean, crying. He said, you know, the worst thing he said was what? The wall? The wall? But you know what? A freaking Obama is adding five more feet to the fence in the White House. <laughs> you know, the one that goes around the White House. So why are you having a fence higher around the White House? Because you want to keep out people that aren't authorized, right? That's what Obama's doing, right? I'm serious. He's really doing that right now. He's adding, because of fence jumpers in the White House. I'm saying, well, well, why is Trump so freaking wrong about putting up a wall because the fence is getting holes cut in it or something like that? like that. It's not keeping out any freaking good people. All the good people in Mexico are still going to come through. You know, what the hell? We're not stopping. Nobody's getting stopped. You're crying out loud, man. It's just stopping. Somebody's cutting a hole in the fence because maybe they're going to do something bad, you know? Um, same reason you have a wall around the freaking White House or a fence. And Obama wants a higher fence. So, I mean, the major media and the, the, um, the political pundits, political experts... I mean, they weren't wrong. They were running an advertising campaign against Trump. They knew it. They knew they... I mean, they were hoping against hope that Trump wouldn't win, you know? <laughs> and they were hoping to create their own reality, you know? In the meantime, you know, the old girl figures out, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a voter for Trump, but I realize this guy who wants me to look at this painting and not make me think that uh, he's not grabbing my ass right now. And she figures out... You know, right after this picture was taken, she punched him in the nose, right? <laughs> That's kind of like exactly what the American public did with voting for Trump they went against the freaking uh, major media pundits. You know, they were saying, oh, look at the painting, look at the painting. Oh, we're really trying to give you a field job, bitches. And they punched, you know, the American people said, screw you, we're punching you in the nose, right? That's exactly what they did. <laughs> so, I mean, that's one example of the way, way I could put it, because, you know, the, they, the game is, the game is, you know, they think they got it all rigged, but they don't. They ain't got, they got shit rigged. And, you know, the reality of the situation is, most of these people that are in the planning rooms in the major media, I mean, the only thing they could do is write with crayons. I mean, crayons get going electronic things. Now, yes, I'm doing that right now, but, you know, I'm doing this to combat them, to tell you the truth. That's why I'm doing it. I mean, it's not like, you know, I'd rather be out there freaking working, doing some, I'll do some other videos too, like how to fix some shit, but, you know, I you know I don't actually do these type of videos all the time, but I got to tell you, I got to put my own, my own angle out on things, because the fear mongers, they put too much fear out there, you know, I don't like that, and the major media is like painting over the whole picture, like to lie to you, and I don't like that. And I just want to give you the truth and what the hell, you know, I think people really know what the hell the major media is doing. But, you know, it's like right now they're having a conniption, you know. It's like old girls here is the planner. She says, promise you one thing. Don't take me home until I'm drunk. <laughs> they're going to be taking a lot of drugs and freaking drinking their ass off in the major media right now because they don't know what to do. And I think the next thing they're going to be doing is pulling the plug on the economy. So... And I think it's going to be all over again, like uh, Thomas Paine said way back when. What was it? I know it was like a little bit before the freaking American Revolution in 1776. He might have quoted this in 1775. I don't know exactly when it was, right around that time. These are times that try men's souls. We're going to actually get our souls tried because they're probably going to screw up the economy when Trump, even maybe even before Trump gets in, because, oh, it's uh, upsetting the markets. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. So anyway, I'm giving you a heads up on this shit. 
I, I don't want to give you an Alex Jones style heads up. I'm not going to give you a commercial about anything. If I was going to give you a commercial about anything, I'd tell you to go buy yourself a, a Marlin 44 lever action, which I have no financial interest in. I'm probably going to pick up one of those damn things real soon here. <laughs> You'll probably see a video on it. Uh, because it's a cowboy gun. I mean, I like cowboy guns. But, you know, you know, I know that, I know that even, uh, probably, it's probably not even advertiser friendly because it's a cowboy gun. You can make your guns. Guns. Are... Anyway, but uh, the thing is, I'm telling you, like, the reality situation, we're not trying to scare people. Um, but I will say this. You know, I do put a lot of silver videos out on this channel stuff. I'm going to tell you this again. And i got to get my ass in gear on this, but I've been so damn busy with other things. I don't have any time to breathe practically, except to make for some of these videos in between, is that farming is probably going to be your most lucrative profession in the future. Because a lot of stuff coming up. That's serious. Um, I don't know, you know, right now, I'm thinking I'd rather just buy a 44 Mar Marlin lever action and get a hunting permit. <laughs> because I ain't got time to freaking wait for freaking stuff to grow. But uh, farming is probably going to be one of your... Um, most lucrative things in the future and uh, because of hyperinflation I think that's all gonna hit the, hit the uh, actual general economy we've had inflation in asset prices premium investment type asset prices like um, real estate that is in the uh, best commercial districts of the United States which just like where Donald Trump's been invested in we've also had a lot of um, asset price inflation in equities P.E. ratios are way skewed right now, and we've had asset price invest, uh, inflation in premium uh, investor-type assets for wealthy people, like classic cars that are like you know the high-end, you know Austin Martins, Austin Martins, uh, the uh, the Bugattis, the Rolls Royce-type classic cars, not so much the regular classic cars or motorcycles and things like that, artwork, jewelry, special types of uh, uh, coins that are not plain bullion but are rare coins there's been a lot of asset price inflation in that and even specialized real estate like Greek islands and stuff that are, are for sale now I'm going to tell you that um, those type of assets are probably going to get be bet well you're not going to be able to afford those anyway but those type of assets are probably going to be going down and I think people that are the elite don't, they don't really have anywhere to run um, everybody's in the same boat and what's going to possibly ha possibly happen is we're going to I think we're going to have major um, price price inflation in the consumer price index, and the only place that people are going to really need to spend is on food. That's an absolute essential. And no matter how high food how high how, how high food goes, people are going to have to buy it. That's why I'm going to tell you that farmers are probably going to be in the driver's seat in the future. Maybe not next week but in the upcoming years due to other things too going on with uh, the mini ice age coming and all that other garbage so I want to add that on to this video about um, you know the political pundits deliberately lying versus um, having it getting it wrong you know the political pundits didn't get it wrong the major media didn't get it wrong they were deliberately lying they're running an advertising campaign against Trump to sway the voters and it turned out it didn't work so I know what's going to happen next. They're going to pull the string on the plug <laughs> on a freaking uh, markets in general and then blame it on Trump, and you'll be playing all their cute little articles out there like, I don't know, George Will or some bullshit would say some bullshit. And uh, anyway, that's all i got to say about this because hey, maybe it's the obvious to some people, maybe it's not. It's going to also be very interesting when um, Hillary runs <laughs> because I think... I think most people don't even know two or three percent of what I know about the Clintons. I think the vast majority they know stuff, and I know some of the stuff's getting pretty popular on YouTube now. I knew all this shit before <laughs> YouTube was around, before the internet was around. I knew there was stuff that happened after the internet was around, and stuff that happened after YouTube has been around too. But I knew plenty of freaking things that were not just scandals, but reality on the Clintons. They're evil as all hell. And once, I think Trump is actually going to bring some of that stuff out. <laughs> That's why she's freaking running scared right now. I'm not going to run a negative campaign. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to watch her pop a cork. It's going to be so funny. So anyway, but 
the battle's not over with, because even back door in 1776, um, you know, these were times they tried to men's souls. They said, the British tried to get back at us in 1812, and that didn't work. And you know what? They actually got back during, back at us during, um, what do you call it, um, the Civil War, the war between states, because European powers egged on that war to get the U.S. government in debt and beholden to the banks again. That's why I'm not pushing revolution here like AJ too much, you know. I'm like saying, be chill, be smart, and uh, be shrewd, and recognize the problem. And that's why I'm trying to get people to recognize the problem without being a fear monger and uh, staying cool about it, right? So anyway, um, again, the freaking media pundits, they didn't get it wrong. The political experts didn't get it wrong. They were lying to people, trying to sway their opinions, and it didn't work. And the whole thing backfired. Actually, the more they try to sway people, the more they attack Trump, the more people got on his side. But you know what? early victories do not mean you're going to win the war. Just remember that. I mean, before people are rejoicing too much, these guys got a lot of aces up their sleeves. But so do I.